we're going to share some personal stuff about you, so you should know my name. My name is Elizabeth Catherine Marcucci. I go by Liz. Hello. <laughs> Denver. Um, Liz lives in St. Pete, and we are best friends who live apart and occasionally show up at an improv festival and perform together. <laughs> so it's a real treat for us. It is. And hopefully a real treat for you. I, I hope so. Yeah. Um, so the show is called Late Bloomers. Obviously there's flowers. We stumbled upon a garden in the Arts District today, which was really cool. It was. Um, the reason we call the show Late Bloomers is I feel like, and I believe Em identifies with this as well, I did not grow into myself until uh, I got divorced about five years ago. I, then, uh, you know, I'm 39. It took me a really long time to figure out who I was and what I liked and where I wanted to be, and it was way too long. And so we just like to make some comedy out of, like, real life lessons. Yeah. So we uh, asked people um, in the audience uh, yesterday, as well as on Instagram, to like write things that they came to terms with later in life. We put them on these very beautiful flowers here. Um, throughout the set, we'll pick that up, read it, share a little bit about- In high school, you, um, you, I don't really want to do this. Because I love you and I want to recount all the horrible things you've done. <laughs> Except for the time that you slept with Brad. Because <laughs> I was dating Brad. And it hurt. But all the bad shit that you do, I just get over it. I forgive you for it. I don't know why. I really, if I'm thinking about it, I don't know what value you offer to me. Oh. <laughs>
preheated if I don't watch it and watch the numbers rise? Well, these modern ovens, they beep. They go beep. <laughs> they beep for you? It'll beep for you, huh? You don't have to stand there and watch it. Have you ever been beeped at, Gran? <laughs> oh. I don't have 
have kids, so I can't talk about cutting an umbilical cord. I don't know anything about that. Um, but I do know that sometimes when I've ended relationships, it's not as freeing as you think. Because you're left after the relationship with all of the leftover feelings. Like the things that you maybe didn't get to say, or that you wanted to say, and then you're still so attached to like, the memory of the person and what could have been. So sometimes ending things is actually harder than just staying in them being kind of miserable. <laughs> I mean, in that case, it's also the same for like other aspects of like outside of relationships. It could yeah. be a job. Yeah. It could be getting a new car. Well, yeah. If you quit your job and you don't have another job lined up, you're just jobless. Yeah. And if your goal is to have a job, then you're not liberated. Yeah, I've been there. Oh. It wasn't fun. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, that was an uncomfortable performance review. <laughs> I just had to, you know, deliver what came down from the top. Well, um, I didn't realize Santa had a problem with my toy making skills. <laughs> Look, as a head elf and your sister it makes it a little awkward. <laughs> Well, this is a family business, all right? So you you have to delineate, are you sister right now? Are you gonna comfort me? Or are you are you head elf who's gonna lay down the hammer? And it could be like step outside of work and then talk about it. Yeah, sure. Okay. <laughs> okay, so like really though, truly, I, I can't make these decisions, okay? Like, like no, I you don't have to get in there and fight for me. You're my sister. Do, do I? Like, is that my job? Because you're now putting both of us on the line. Well, I thought, as my sister, it is your job to go in there and defend me. I'm younger than you. I'm not as good looking. I don't have a lot going for me. You have to go up to the big man okay. in the white beard and be like, shh, she'll stop making dildo. <laughs> for the family if we both lose our jobs. So you're saying that if, if you don't if you don't bring down the little tiny elf mallet okay, me, okay. that you're gonna lose your job too. Yeah. Well then I quit. <laughs> no I quit. I don't want to work with you and I don't want to work with that big Belly. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't want this to happen. When you said, hey, I'm in between careers right now. I'd like to come do like a couple shifts at the workshop. I just thought I was helping you get back on your feet. I didn't realize that you would actually come and work in this toxic environment with me. Uh, well, why wouldn't I work? I love you. I like being around you. And I feel like you're, do, you're so successful. And so you're my guide for success. I thought I, I would just follow your lead, but I'm me. And I'm not going to stop making dildos because they're a joy. They're a Christmas joy. And you know what? You know, you know that mothers, mothers fill their own stockings every day. And you know, you know what I do? I put dildos in those stockings. Look, I'm, I'm not going to argue with you. I think what you do is a blessing. Our certain core values that the company follows that we just is standard procedure. and taking 
hair. Yeah, you had the big sticky note on top that said "Go home." Oh, I thought "Go home" meant like sign it, go home. <laughs> Chicago where all the highways merge and I got a flat right at that section so I pulled into like the tiniest little triangle in between just like eight lanes of traffic and I got out of the car because I thought that was the safest place to be and I just sat, I just sat on the hood and waited for somebody to come help uh, and eventually my uncle shows up like 45 minutes later and he's like what are you doing out of the car safer than being in the car if somebody hit me. I was like, I could run. <laughs> and he's like, no, you don't have a sense of danger. <laughs> and I, no, I don't think I do. I think I just was like, thought I was so, just like in the breeze, taking it in. <laughs> I wish I knew how to change a flat. I'll teach you. Really? Yeah. You're a good friend. Yeah. <laughs> And that's how you do it. <laughs> it's uh, it's a lot less complicated than I thought it was gonna be. Yeah, milk and a cow sure is easy. <laughs> it's 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 uh, soft. It's a little hairy. Yeah. <laughs> Not as hairy also as I thought it was gonna be. Uh huh. I don't understand the position that you have me in, however. I always thought it was supposed to go into a bucket, <laughs> not, not me, <laughs> covered in milk. The best way to learn, first it's you, then it's the bucket. We are working our way up. We're working our way up. You can take a pause for a minute. She's tuckered out. You've been working hard. You've been Yeah, I feel I'm wet. Oh, huh. 
you to the family business. Well, uh, well, it's part of being in a relationship with me. Sorry, there's a cow hair. <laughs> You know, that's, that's like just part of the bonding experience though, because when my family dies, which is probably here soon, I'm going to inherit all of this. And, and you and me, we need to know how to work it, or else generations of wealth, generations of, 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 of memories and history just goes away. <laughs> that's, a lot. that's a lot of pressure. <laughs> You're, you're like laying a lot on me right now. I'm meeting your family. Yeah. You're telling me that if I don't learn how to take care of, I mean, look at this. I can't even see where it ends. Because it does. If I don't, <laughs> <laughs> then then your entire family history is just gone. It's done. It's gone. It's like the Lion King. Everything that the sun touches is gone. <laughs> okay, so I'm hearing money, which I like. <laughs> um, but. I, I'm not, I kind of mess, I mess stuff up. I'm not good at outdoors things. Well, no one said you had to be perfect at it. Can I have an inside job? <laughs> like canning, I think I could can things. <laughs> do you can on the farm? Yeah, I mean, there's a plethora of things we do on the farm. Canning is most definitely one of them, but that is a byproduct of of being in the fields and tilling it and getting the crops out. And you gotta get your hands dirty a little bit. You're telling me under these beautifully manicured nails you've never once gotten a little dirt. Yeah, no, they're speckless. <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I don't even know how to change a flat tire. <laughs> You know, you had a beautiful life out here. Like, you had a family that was involved in everything that you did, and they, I mean, they took you out, and they taught you things, and they probably, like, took you to church, and maybe gave you, like, life lessons and stuff like that. My mom opened the door when we were little, and she said, I hope you come home later. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I don't, you know, I don't want, I don't, Jess. I don't know how to be a family. Jess, okay. <laughs> I love you, and I love you ever since you sat down in Economics 101 right next to me and pulled out your pretty pink notebook with sparkles on it, and I said, who is this classy, classy human? <laughs> that, that pen with the peacock feather? Oh, yeah, that hit me in the face when you write your notes. So cute. Oh, cute. But I knew right then and there that it didn't matter. Because we have each other, and if you if it was hard, we'd get through it. And if you truly, truly don't want to do all this farm stuff, if you don't want to have the next step up and actually get to use a pail and have fresh raw milk, make butter, <laughs> make all sorts of good things with it, pasteurize it, make cheese, <laughs> so many things you can do with raw milk. Sometimes we can even sell parts of the cow, and the rich people from the city will buy raw milk. What? Yeah, it's a thing. But look, if you don't want to You're very me, industrious. It was that economics degree. I, I was just getting lost in your eyes. I didn't pay attention. Okay, we're back, we're back. You're saying that if I don't want this life, I don't have to have it. No. Well, I'm gonna throw in the dirty towel on my way of being, and I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a shot, maybe. Can you give me a bucket? Bring back the towel. Oh my God, this one's so funny. This one says, uh, "How to talk to people with eye contact." <laughs> I had a habit of starting every rehearsal with intensive eye contact for like up to five minutes. Uh, sometimes people at first didn't like it and then by the end they loved it. So um, eye contact's important. No, 
Oh, I like this one. This one says, selfishness is not me. Ooh, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. Um, I, I, like, I like to say that I'm in my selfish era. Um, that like uh, putting myself first is one of the most important things at the moment. Because if I put myself first and uh, pour back into myself, then I have more to give to the people around me. Um, as someone that was like a perpetual, I'm going to take care of other people. Sometimes at the end of that, you don't have anything to pour back into yourself. And I found myself in that place way too many times. So. Yeah. Um, I also think it's like about how you go about it, yeah. right? Like yeah. you can be a jerk about saying you need to have your needs met, yeah. or you can you can be kind and say like, hey, I need a little space, and I'm yeah. gonna take some time for me, away from you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have a question. How many of you have like a self care routine? Like, do you take care of yourself generally? Clap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
not, I'm not going to, but really, I'm not going to beat around the bush. Like, I didn't want to intersect with you. It wasn't, it was the city planners. Like, I couldn't do anything about it, right? They built me, they built me right through you. It felt invasive. I didn't like it. I asked them if they could cut you down. <laughs> oh, thank you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> no, that really that really means a lot to hear you admit that you have invaded my space. <laughs> I forgive you. <laughs> Thanks. Look, uh, because we've been like so tied next to each other for so long, I uh, I haven't I haven't really been taking care of myself, no. which is why three fires have started. <laughs> I I just I just been running ragged, you know, burning burning it at both ends. <laughs> Puns. <laughs> well, I mean, I I have a whole system underneath the ground that helps me take care of myself. And you're right, you don't you don't have that. You rely on on men to come out and service you, or women. <laughs> or, <laughs> to fix you and they've neglected you. I mean, so look, it feels, it feels nice for the moment, right? Like they come in and it feels real good. And in that moment, I feel taken care of. And then they leave. And I'm alone, stuck on you again. And, and I don't feel fulfilled. I don't have a network underneath the ground. I'm not rooted. <laughs> if it makes you feel any better, I'm unless somebody cuts me down, I'm never going anywhere. Mm. I'm always going to be here right next to you. I can't fix you, I can't take care of you, but I can stand by your side while you just disintegrate and fray and tell you I love you anyway. <coughs> that feels good. <laughs> Maybe when I 
come home, have dinner ready because it's been a really long day. Um, Would you be willing to settle for clapping for all of these people that just watched us do 45 minutes? Yeah! yeah. to us and it's something that I think changes lives. Yeah. So yeah. that's it. Thank now we're you. gonna go. Bye.